in the video of today, I'm going to be teaching you how to connect to your Elasticsearch instance using Spring Boot, Kotlin, and Encryption. Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Rafael De Leo. This is the first video that I'm doing uh, towards software development regarding teaching how to implement something. In this video, I will be speaking English probably in, the, in my following videos. I will also be speaking English. So if you were a Portuguese speaker person, you can find subtitles below eventually. Um, so let's get started. Right, so as you can see here, I already have my instance of Elasticsearch running at port 9200 with encryption. I'm gonna show you here with Postman that I can perform a uh, request, a get request to my Elasticsearch instance. You can see here the cluster name, you can see the cluster UID, the number, this is all running in Docker, right? Tagline you know for search. Oh. Okay, and now let's create a new Spring Boot uh, project. So this one will be called Elastic Tutorial con dot Okay, so I'm using the Spring Initializer, and let's get it. I'm not gonna add any dependence at this stage. I'm just gonna finish. It's gonna create the project for me. Okay, I think we're good to go. On um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is open our build.gradle and add this new implementation here. I'm gonna be adding this here. So data, Spring Data Elasticsearch. Let's reload it. All right, so in most tutorials you can find online in the internet, you would see that basically all you gotta do is add this properties to your application.properties and it should be enough, right? So by adding this and then ABC123, okay, this, this is my password just for testing, of course. So basically this should be enough, right? But since we are trying to connect using SSL instead of encryption, what we're gonna need to do is a little bit trickier, right? So let's create a new file, let's create a new package first, which we'll name config, All right? Let's delete this properties. This should be enough if we're not using encryption, but since we are, we're not going to use this properties here. All right, so let's create a new class, which you'll be calling calling new Kotlin class file, rest client config. All right, so let's create this class. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna extend this class from the abstract Elasticsearch configuration class. All right, let's import it. Okay, and now it's complaining because, okay, we need to implement its members. Let's do it. All right, so we have the Elasticsearch client. Let's leave it there. Let's annotate this with the configuration configuration annotation all right this is imported now okay let's create a bin okay so this is going to be a bin right okay this is not yet implemented and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have four different variables inside it okay let me copy them here so we have the host the port the user and the password i'm going to change this one to abc123 right now in the future of course you don't want to have them hard coded like this right this is just a tutorial this is not for production remember that right so then what you're going to do is you're going to declare here a credentials provider right Okay, let's import all of this, username and password credentials. Okay, they're all imported now. All right, now we're gonna create a new SSL context, which will be no, as soon as it's initialized. All right, and then we're gonna create a new key store of type PKCS12. 
All right, let's import the key store. So I'm doing all of this. Okay. All right, so now let's load the store. The first time you're doing this, the key store does not yet exist. All right, so you have to load the key store from a no source with no password. Um, all right, and let's get now the file containing your certificate, right? That I assume you have already downloaded from your cluster. I have, but it's not in this path. I downloaded it to my temp folder. Let's hope it's still there, right? Okay. Now let's declare a certificate factory of type X509. All right, let's add it to the key store like this. Okay, nice. And let's init a trust manager factory. Okay. Let's import it. All right. After that, let's need the SSL context that was no before using this trust manager factory. All right. And finally, let's build what we were trying to do, a REST client with the credentials provider and the SSL context initialized previously, right? Let's import all of this. All right, okay, and that's it. Now we should have everything we need to connect to our Elasticsearch instance, right? It will be connecting to localhost, the port is 9200, the user is Elastic, and the password is ABC123. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to define a document, right? So a document is how we call an entity in NoSQL databases, right? So we're going to be defining a document for representing a person, right? So let's create a new class here. Let's call it person, Kotlin. All right, let's annotate it with the document annotation and this will be saved into this index here which I call my index it doesn't exist yet it will be created as well right this is going to be a data class and it's gonna have an ID and a name okay let's import the ID annotation all right hope we need to be here instead Okay, delete this one. All right. Commit this actually. Okay. All right, so we have a data class person with an ID and a name. Okay, now that we have our entity, let's implement our repository, right? Using Spring Data Elasticsearch. So let's call it a person repository, right? This will allow us to do the basic operations without having to implement it all by ourselves, right? And it is going to extend the Elasticsearch repository, interface, and here we're going to put our class person, our document, and its ID type, which is a string, right? And it shouldn't be a class, it was supposed to be an interface. And then we can delete these brackets because we don't need them. And that's pretty much it. 
and now let's see how we can perform this basic operations by creating a controller, right? A REST controller. Let's create a new package. Let's call it controller. And let's create a new class and let's call it person controller. Okay, let's annotate it with the annotations REST controller and request mapping, right? So this is going to map our controller uh, so basically you also need this dependency, the Spring Boot Starter Web. Let's add it to our build.gradle. Right, let's see if I can just do it this way here. Spring Boot Starter Web. Let's see if that's it. I think it is. So while it loads, let me just tell you that you can find links to my LinkedIn profile and my Medium profile as well in the description below. Besides that, you can also find the same tutorial as a Medium article, which I will leave the link to in the description below. Uh, let's go back here to the controller now and let's import these annotations. Request mapping and REST controller. We're going to map it to person, right? This we're going to auto wire the person repository. Oops. Okay, it's imported. And let's create now here our functions for exposing our basic operations. Okay, so we have a get all, get mapping. It's going to return a list of person. Alright, so basically it's just doing person repository dot find all dot to list. Let's do our create here, post mapping. Okay, you receive a request body of type person, right? In person repository dot save. Uh, and the person that was sent as a body, we have to put mapping. Okay, to return an optional of type person. And if it's present, then it will return the name. Right, it dot name equals name. Let's make it public. Okay, we put mapping, which you basically find our person, and if it's present, then we're going to update it with the new name, right, and save it. Okay, and finally, we have a delete, which you basically delete by ID. Right, and here in the put, we also receive the ID as a request param to update our person that already exists. Right, okay, I think we have everything that we need. Let's run our application. All right, guys, so before we continue, what we want to do is we want to come to our document, our person document, and remove this private from here because we want to see this in the response so we can do the following operations. All right, and the first operation that we'll be doing is the um, create one. So let's come to Postman here. We are looking at localhost uh, at 8080, right? At slash person, and let's create our first person. All right, so it's a post operation. We have a body of type JSON. So let's create it and give it a name. So basically, it will be called Rafael Belio. Let's send it and you see that it was created, right? So now let's try to update it. Let's change it to put, we still have the same one. Let's add the ID here equals the ID that was created. And so now let's update it. We change it here to put, right? We added the parameter here, the ID. Let's also add the new name. Right, and name equals to Rafael De Leo updated. And let's remove the body and let's do a send. And okay, it was updated. And we can see that it was by removing all of these uh, parameters here and performing a get all operation. Right, so you can see that this is the only one that exists. This is a list. 
right? And this is the ID that we were using, and this is the new, uh, the the person that we created with the name, and then we updated with this other name. Let's just create another one here. New creation. Let's send it. Okay, and now let's do a get again. Let's remove the body, and you can see that we have these two documents inside our index, right? And now let's continue. So we can also delete it. So let's delete the new creation. Let's delete it by copying this ID, adding the parameter here. So it's ID equals this one. Let's change it to delete and send it. Okay, and now let's perform another get all. And what we get, let's remove this parameter here first. And we should get only one document in this list, and that's what we get. Okay, nice. It all worked. So that was it. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and also leave a comment down below and share this video with somebody else who might be also interested in this kind of content. See you next time.